This time, continuing the post-apocalyptic builds with a tower made out of various scrap and junk. And to start with taking a circle of foam core and beveling the edges. For use as a kind of frame, just taking some more foam core and cutting it into rectangles and gluing it onto the base. I then attach more pieces of foam core around the base and the top to break up the shape and make it appear a bit more haphazard and less uniform. I then used another piece just to cap off the top and give me a footprint for the top of the tower. However, it still felt too uniform, so I went in with a knife and just started cutting pieces away. This was mostly to break up the rectangular frame and make it a bit more chaotic. I also felt that the top was too small, so I went in and glued some more flooring up there to give it a kind of big overhang piece and add a bit of extra height on half of it. Then to break up the kind of flatness of the sides, I added some more foam core as well as some underfloor insulation board just to give some kind of rocky texture on the base where you have sort of broken concrete or kind of stone ledges. The top section needed a bit of support, so with some kind of wedge shaped pieces of foam core went in and made it more secure. On the base I went in with some more foam core and made a rough door shape. And I originally planned to have some kind of stairs leading up to it but I eventually went in and did a ring ladder instead. Also discovered the base was too small and it looked a bit unwieldy, so I expanded that using more foam core. This has the added benefit of it gives a bit more height to the piece, as well as a bit more variation in the base. So, moving on to the fun part and grabbing any kind of texture I had on hand, so a lot of this came from corrugated cardboard and I found this kind of textured cardstock in my local hardware store and just cutting all of it out and gluing it in various places overlapping the entire base of the frame. And the good part about this is there is pretty much no good way to do it and I'm pretty convinced that the worse it looks before you paint it at this stage the better it looks afterwards. So just throw anything on any way you feel like it might go and if it goes badly, just stick more stuff on over the top of that. It is a very additive process. On the edge of the walkway, just cut some thin strips of the textured cardboard and glued them into piece, just so they covered up the edges. And most of this gets covered again later, but it's still useful to cover them up anyway.
I mostly used the corrugated cardboard on the sides of the pieces and then used the textured card on the top for the base because it's a lot easier to kind of position stuff on top of whereas the corrugated cardboard isn't so great for flooring. also had a package wrapped in these kind of plastic straps and they also have a kind of nice steel effect to them so some of those got used in the flooring as well. Then going back to the corrugated cardboard and using that as the battlement around the walkway and just varying the size and the shape just so it didn't look too uniform and it still looked fairly scrap hazard. Moving on to the base, I thought it needed some rocks, just to make the tower look a bit more secure at the base. So I've got some chunks of styrofoam, carved them up into a kind of half sphere shape with a knife, and then pushed some rock texture into them with a tinfoil ball. These then got glued onto the base of the tower to make it look a bit more natural and a bit more secure at the base. And a few smaller ones on the other side. Moving on to the detailing step, and I have these little kind of self-adhesive rhinestone beads and just attaching them onto the outside of the cardboard pieces so they look like rivets. Once there were a suitable amount of rivets attached, I moved on to the top of the piece. I made a small shack out of more foam core and corrugated cardboard and then started stabbing bamboo skewers into it so I'd have a basis for adding some kind of canvas sails onto it later. Using both super glue and hot glue to secure it where I could. I didn't want to cover too much of the main piece with the bamboo skewers, but I did attach two of them just so I could have a smaller sail on the side of the piece as well. It was then time to make some basing paint. So with a combination of cork flock, sand, black gesso and PVA, as well as a tiny bit of water, and then just mixing that together until it's nice and goopy. This was then smeared all around the base, just to give it some texture, as well as merging it into the base of the tower, where you'd get the kind of build up of dust and sand against the base of it. It's also where you can try and hide some of the corners of the foam core and stop them poking through later. While that was still wet, I dropped a load of tiny aquarium pebbles into it and then gave them a small poke just so they were a bit more secure. Before priming the main piece, I went in and tried to remove as many of the hot glue strings as possible, but it doesn't matter if you miss a few because they just kind of look like wear and tear anyway. And then going in with black gesso and priming the entire piece. With the gesso dry, moving on to the base coat with a mid brown colour and giving the entire piece, including the base, a coat of that. Using a spare piece of foam as a sponge and some metallic paints, going in and dabbing all over the metallic sections just to give them a bit of kind of rusty vibe. 
You can also get some nice effects by varying the density of which you hit each piece, just to make it look like some pieces are newer, some pieces are older, or just scavenge from different places and different materials. For the ground, we're going to mix together the same brown paint we used with the base coat, as well as a good amount of white paint, and then give a dry brush over the entire thing. And I use a very soft bristled brush for this, because I find it just helps to pick out the detail, and not get too dense on any of the areas. I also overlapped with the base of the building, just so you get a bit of weathering, and where you have a build up of the various sand and dirt against the tower. With some less paint on the brush, I also went in and gave a general dry brush over the entire piece, just to dull down the metal a bit, and kind of give it a unifying colour. With most of the painting done, I mixed together some PVA, some brown acrylic, and some water, just to make a very kind of murky wash. This was then used with some kitchen roll, which I tore into strips, gave a quick bath to, and then attached between the bamboo skewers, so you'd get these kind of sun-weathered canvas sails between them. To make these steps leading up to the door, I took a thick paper clip, cut the wire down to size, and then bent it at a 90 degree angle before drilling into the side of the piece using a pin vise, and then attaching it with a little bit of glue. Using some tufts, applied a few around the base and also used them to cover up a few holes in the basing where there was a gap between the tower and the dirt. Also trying to stick just to a brown and beige palette just so everything looks a bit washed out and radiated. For a final touch, just took a very light white dry brush and hit the top of the rocks so they had a slightly different colour to the dirt around them. It does look a bit bright here, but it does darken down, and it just makes it stand out a little bit compared to the brown around it. And there we have the finished piece, a scrap watchtower for the post-apocalypse. With a few 28mm models for scale, and the most professional rotation you will ever see on a YouTube channel. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it, and I hope to catch you next time.